Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. The phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. Any other questions you'd like to email in, please do at questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right now, like this very second, dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you will be transferred to someone that can help you. Now, before the break, we were talking about legislation, regulation, laws, all the other good stuff about the insurance industry. So we talked about how the there there is the the laws that need to be going for insurance carriers, their guidelines based on the McCarran Ferguson Act are up to the states. The states decide what they're going to do. Based on that, there is in all of the states an insurance department. They sometimes call it the Department of Insurance. Some states call it the Department of Finance and the Department of Insurance is part of that. But they're somewhere in the state's bureaucracy, sorry, in the state's system, there is an organization, a part that is dedicated to dealing with the insurance regulations. And part of that, there is going to be an insurance commissioner who is tasked with basically dealing with all things relating to insurance, which makes sense, right? You got to have someone in charge. So how is that insurance commissioner put in that place? Who decides who is going to take that responsibility? Because as you can imagine, it's going to be a fairly significant job. It's going to be important. It's not going to have, you know, it's not a part-time gig. It's going to steer the entire organiz- the entire industry of insurance in that state in one direction or another. So the Department of Insurance and their insurance commissioner, nine states as of this recording, have an elected insurance commissioner. That's California, Georgia, Kansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, North Carolina, North Dakota, and Oklahoma. So if you're living in one of those states, you have an insurance commissioner that is there because of you, the voting public. You put them there, or her. That's why I said, um, you put them there. Is that fair? Is that gender neutral? I think it is. You put them there. Now, what happens in the rest of the states? Well, the rest of the states, that position is usually given to this individual by the governor. The governor is going to appoint somebody that role. They're going to say, oh, you are such a good person. You are now the insurance commissioner. You don't have any say in that. Personally, there are pros and cons to that that I can see. Some of the pros are that it's no longer a political position. Right. If there is an insurance commissioner that's in a state that has to be elected by people, then, of course, you're going to have a commissioner that has to deal with the politics of it. Right. Because insurance can be, even though it shouldn't be these days, very political. Some states will have what's considered a very liberal insurance commissioner. Liberal insurance commissioners tend to be the ones that you will think of, even though this is not necessarily the case, are going to provide the most consumer protections whereas the more conservative insurance commissioners are seen as, even though it's not true, the ones that will be more flexible with the insurance industry and provide the insurance companies with more leeway to do their business. Now, of course, you hear that and you think, well, I want the liberal guy. I want to have the most protections that I can, right? That's why I'm saying it's not always about the politics of it. Even I have to sit here now and try and distill it down to that, even though that's not actually the case. Every individual insurance commissioner does their own thing. Now, are they going to have slants? Are they going to tend to focus on one thing more over the other? Of course. But in general, the insurance commissioner's job is to be sure that the admitted insurance carriers are solvent. They know what it is that they're doing. They're going to be there to pay claims. They play fair, basically, okay? That's going to be the case regardless of if the insurance commissioner is elected by the general public or if it's someone that the governor or other high-level representative in the state appoints to that position. Now, just for the sake of discussion, I'm talking about how some commissioners have their own, well, things that they're known for or they're remembered for, I guess you could say, right? What is their staple? What are they going to go down as being responsible for? So I, I, I took the time to keep track of a couple of them for you, and I'll give you these. These are out of California, working from current going backwards. From 2019 to the present, California has the insurance commissioner, Ricardo Lara. He is known, what he is going to be remembered for, creating the sustainable insurance strategy, which is the most sweeping insurance reforms in probably 30 plus years in the state of California. Now, insurance reforms, does that make you think insurance protection, insurance company flexibility? 
you don't know. And it doesn't matter because the goal is more updated regulations. And that's what Ricardo Lara is doing. Prior to him, we had Dave Jones from 2011 to 2019. He is best remembered for expanding health care coverage and consumer protections. You can guess which side of the political spectrum he is from. Prior to that, we had Steve Poisner, 2007 to 2011, and he strengthened auto insurance regulations. Prior to that, we had John Garamendi, 2003 to 2007. He focused on earthquake insurance reforms. And prior to him, we had Harry Lowe from 2000 to 2003. He worked on workers' compensation and reforms that come through that. So every insurance commissioner is going to be focused on something. I almost said fixated. That might be true too. But they're going to be focused on things based on what it is that their state needs the most, what it is that they need to have done, what it is that's most important for them to be dealing with. Because insurance is a big business in this country. For example, again, just in the state of California, there are over 300,000 people that are directly employed by insurance companies. And that does not take into account independent agents, independent brokers. That That's in addition to those 300 some odd thousand. So you can quickly see how it's important to have an insurance commissioner that is able to walk that line and deal with the insurance carriers as well as the consumer protections that need to be in place. Again, not an easy job. Now, while I'm mentioning that there are independent insurance agents and brokers that are not included in that $300,000 number I gave you, let me give you another quick tidbit that you should be aware of. There are basically three types of insurance people that represent insurance policies to consumers. We call them captive agents as one option. These are people that will provide one product from one insurance company. They have independent insurance agents or brokers, which are independent. They're going to be able to go to many carriers to try and find a product that best suits you. And there are employee agents or brokers that are employees of insurance companies. And obviously they will just sell the product of that insurance company. Let's talk a little bit more about that after the break, because I think it's important that we know a little more detail, fill in a little more color to what that looks like. And what is best for you? Because the truth is, there is no one simple answer. There might be. Let's talk about it in a little more detail when we come back. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you for being here. Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. And of course, send your emails to questions at insurancehour.com. We will be back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.